Thank you very much to the organizer, and particularly to Liam for I'm inviting sorry. me here. Oh, yes, thanks, Sarah. And then Alliance, when I read my, the bios which I sent, how general it is, but I hope in the future when we will have all ORCIDs, we just don't need to send the bios because the ORCIDs will link hopefully to all our you know, past and, you know, and, and experience and work and publication. <coughs> Full screen, that's the one, brilliant. So yes, I've just made a minor correction to the title because I'm, can you hear me? Sorry. I put it on, I think it is on. Maybe you should put it a bit more closer to it. No, it's okay. Um, yes, because I come from the bioscience field. So my background is in biology. I am a biologist by training, did my PhD in molecular um, biology in Imperial College in London, and then actually I moved into, um, I was a lab scientist and I moved into data management. So that's what I've done for the last 12 years. I was working in the European Bioinformatics before, uh, European Bioinformatics Institute before, and then I moved to Oxford. So really, really curation and handling data, helping data producers to store them, to share, it's what I've done for, uh, for quite a long time, dealing with different data types. So um, first of all, I told you the, the logo from the data side, but also the words which say is helping, you know, what data science is meant to do is to help you to find and access and reuse data. Now, my presentation is about the word reuse of data because it's important to find the data, access it, of course, make it available, be able to point to it, but then it's what we get. When we get the data, we need to be able to understand exactly what the data means, the descriptor of the experiment, and many speakers before me have already, you know, go on this, the topic of describing the experimental step, what is called the experimental metadata, because otherwise we use the word metadata and we really mean different things here. So the importance of reproducible research and uh, research in the bioscience field are very, uh, very aware of uh, what reproducible research means. So they want to make sure that when the data is out there, it's reproducible and is reusable by third parties. Now, this is a very good example of a paper where a group of scientists <laughs> look at 18 articles of macro-based experiment and try to reproduce the result that those papers you know, were, were actually describing it. And the surprise is that uh, they could reproduce only two of those articles. For others, they couldn't find the data, and for 10 of them, there was no way they could get anything out of it. And the reason was because the description of this data set was incomplete. But actually, if we look at the figure from this article, you will see that you know, um, 50, more than 50% of, uh, of the data was on the data set were not reproducible. But if you look at the reason why it was not reproducible, half is because the data wasn't available, right? But also because either the software wasn't available or the methods, so the description of what was done, how the data was produced was unclear. And anyway, for some other reason, maybe even if the information was present, they could not get the same results. So this is a really very important example of how when you make the data available, the description needs to be uh, rich enough that you can reuse the data. Because reuse data means to be able to reproduce it and use for other purpose. Another example, um, it's how a bright promising cancer testing fell apart. So um, researcher at Dukes, published something which turned out to be wrong, and people died as a consequence of this. Now, um, when other colleagues look into the reason why the data was wrong, they realized they found immediately the error, and the error was due to data management. The column in an Excel, Excel shield was shifted, and everything, and the change, and the meaning there changed completely. And it was it, but it's even worse when you realize that actually uh, the, per, the, the group who produced this, this, who made this mistake, shrugged off this comment like it's just a clerical error. That's not, I mean, data management, it's key here. And there are mistakes which have, have, can have big consequences, like in these cases. Okay, so going back to the word reuse, so um, my um, suggestion is not to data blobs. I mean, it's important to have access to something, but that something needs to be described in order to be reusable. So it needs to be verifiable, need to be complete in terms of information, need to be structured enough. Let's try to explain what structured means now. 
we need a structured description of a certain data sets. Now, I work in bioscience. I work with a variety of data producers using different technology, different type of sample, looking at different hypotheses. Here is just an example of an experiment where liver is treated by a certain compound and then different measurements are done using different technology and a lot of data is produced. What is really important is to capture all the steps of the experiment. What I call experimental metadata, what many people in my field call experimental metadata. So where the sample come from, you know, what kind of dose was the compound, what day was it given and etc. What technology was software. It's important to capture this salient information so you can redo potentially the experiment, but in reality because you then can analyze the data in the context of the experimental steps. Of course, the difficulty here is uh, you don't have to capture too much and not too little. The firms write enough information. That's where it's very difficult to understand what enough information means for a scientist to be able to reproduce the information. So strike the balance between a richer description, which is maybe way too much for like a data publication, and not enough that cannot be reproduced. It's, it's where you know, the, the gold is. Of course, this is an example of, of an experiment, a, a, a figure trying to illustrate experimental designs, so one of a real experiment uh, that we have, we have dealt with. And you realize when you start having a lot of samples with a lot of measurements and a lot of information, where things need to start going to different domains, it becomes really complex to understand what does that need to be described. So of course, you, it's important to engage with the domain expert, so the researcher, the one that produced the data because they know what they've done, but also because they tend to be also a data analysts themselves, so they know what needs to be recorded in order to they analyze the information or reuse the information. So the community is fully aware of the importance of reporting in detail what has been done. And there is a growing um, a movement for reproducible data and so a variety of, of uh, standard efforts, society, working group. And in the last 12 years, I've been involved in so many, I can't even recall the name anymore. But it, it is important to have all these domain experts, so this bottom-up bottom approach in defining what's important that need to be reported when an experiment is described. But it's also, there is also lots of problems there because um, they are, these groups are divided in different areas, different domain of science. Some are focusing on a technology, for example, around macro technology. Other groups are uh, focused around hydrofood technology. Other fo groups like the biodiversity groups cover biodiversity. So more like it, a, a larger a, a life science domain. So it's very difficult to really um, make those groups to coordinate certain activity because certain descriptions should be common across domain. So this is, this is the difficult part. So this group in general are creating three type of uh, norms of reporting standard, I would want to call them. They are creating format, which is how the information needs to be structured to be shared by, um, between groups or between software. They are defining terminology, what terms we need to use when we say something, we describe an element in, in the experiment. And guidelines meaning uh, what does this core information need to be reported when we describe those rich, richly, um, rich experiments? Just to give a sense of the numbers, there are over 130 formats in bioscience, 303 terminology, from anatomy to disease uh, to a script description of instruments and machines, and over 150 of those guidelines divided by guidelines covering um, more um, clinical trial versus those which um, cover more uh, basic research, as in so many acronyms out there. So um, I can't, I, I'm not gonna describe any of them, but if you are curious about it, uh, we put together a, a, a website which is called biosharing.org, just Google as it is and you get there. And we have over 400 standards now that we are curating them because even, even finding the, the homepage and linking to them, it's, it's, it's actually difficult. So on this biosharing, we are listing data sharing policies in bioscience area, standards, and, but we're also working with the, uh, the Nucleic Acid Research Journal, NAR, 
database uh, journal um, because they collect paper about databases. And so we work with them because as the paper is accepted, we also capture the description of the database and try to understand if the databases use any of these communicant standards because you want to know really what are these, you know, uh, what these databases are capturing, what format they use, if they are endorsed by the community, what this means because publishers are recommending submission to certain databases and standard are important, so all this information is connected. So, uh, well, this just uh, bioscience really, when, when you talk about, when you talk about bioscience, is not one domain. There, as I say, these community norms and there's different way of defining things and calling things. Even the word experiment means different things for different people. You know, if you talk with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with somebody in the health medical area, it's a very different jargon from um, a group working in environmental field. So that's the difficulties is because we want to connect, you know, a human information with the environmental information. So that's where that's where actually going across domain it's really important, but it's also very challenging. So go back to my initial point. Is it possible to achieve a common structural representation of uh, this diverse bioscience experiment that somehow they transcend the individual domains and somehow try to follow this community standard so that we can have richly described experiment which can be reused by somebody else when shared and cited. Well, of course, I, I cannot say we have solved everything because we have not, but we have worked in this area for a very long time with, with a large number of collaborators. We put together called the ISA Commons. So it's, it's an ecosystem of uh, 30 uh, public uh, internal and public resources which are, which are using this ISA, which I'll explain in one slide, hopefully very simply, this metadata tracking framework, something which is general purpose enough that could describe any type of experiment, try to use community standards, uh, provide a set of tools so that the information can be captured, stored locally, and then submitted to different public repository uh, in these different domains. So this is the domains that those group work, um, work in. And um, I want to highlight, in particular, as Herbert mentioned, CIDR is this um, effort in France, and along with GigaScience, these are the two groups which already use the OI to tag the, uh, the ISA information, which is within the repository. We also work with, uh, with the two of the Australian efforts, um, particularly with the uh, Bio, uh, Bio Platform Australia. We have uh, several stem cell group in, in Harvard. We have a repository DBI, which is public called uh, Metabolo Metabolite, which is about metabolomic data. We also work with uh, um, internal uh, groups in, in companies. Um, so th this group here, the, la the larger effort, the, the public effort, actually these are not individual labs. So these are, are somehow service provider themselves, which serves other, other researchers. So it's a quite large community. So let me tell you in one slide what ISA means. ISA is investigation study assay. It's a way to describe an experiment which has a study which is a central unit, which has a sample which has been observed, treated, or manipulated. And uh, the sample or part of the sample, it's then uh, go through a certain assay, so a certain analytical measurement, and there is some data produced. And so, so this, this template is general enough that it can be customized if you are describing a macro experiment or an environmental experiment, depending on the technology you use. We convert to um, format which are used by public repository because journal in bioscience endorse certain public repository for data deposition. So it's important that if you help uh, um, curating the data at the source, you also help uh, the researcher to easily pipeline the data to these databases and not having to reformat the data because it's a lot of work that they don't want to do. We also work in the RDF area, so all the linked data do domains that we are converting the, the ISA format into RDF. Uh, this is only to show, without going into the detail, it's just that this is the anatomy of one of the tools, the ISA tools. This is like the editor, which is it's used for curation or for creating this, the, the description of this experiment. And, and somehow it's spreadsheet-based, although it's not a spreadsheet, it's a Java tool, because, uh, because scientists, biologists like Excel. That's what, they, that's what they use for data management. But somehow this is an intelligent way to use an Excel-like tool, which it's, it can be customized to use a standard by the community, a certain ontology, and et cetera. But we also have an alpha version that access the data site uh, metadata store <coughs> for those which want to mint the OI if they are registered to get the OI for a data set. 
And this is